play the ominous music, Matilda, because today we are talking about slow seasons as a freelancers. You know, when those dry spells hit and you don't have as much work as you'd like, or when you don't have any work at all. And yes, it happens to the best of us hitting those completely normal. Yes, they are completely normal. Slower seasons is not the end of the world. And yes, you can even benefit from those times. So let's make those slow times when you have no work work for you. In this video, let's talk about eight things you can do during a slow season as a freelancer to help you get out of that weird funk and back to rainy season. Get it? Rainy season? Raining money? Opposite? Slow season? No. Hey, my name is Dea, freelancer, digital business manager, and most recently entrepreneur. And as always, you can find sections on the play bar below if you want to skip to a certain part of the video. Your time is precious, so take what you need. And if you want to watch this on 2x, I will not be offended in the least. All right, let's dive into the video. Now, the first thing, the most important thing is do not let the negative self-talk sneak up on you and bring you down. Check it before it wrecks you. Not having work for a period of time does not make you a failure. It does not mean somehow this path was not meant for you or that your mom was right and should have never quit your cushy nine to five to explore freelancing. While yes, it is 100% acceptable to doubt yourself when you have no work and feel that dreaded imposter syndrome rear its ugly head for a few minutes or okay for a few hours. Do not let it pull you into that negative thought spiral. I have been there, it is no fun. Being in a negative thought spiral will make everything else we're gonna talk about in this video more difficult to do. So let yourself wallow a little, stew a little in the self-pity and then set that aside to focus on more productive uses of your time. Here are a few things I do during those times when I need to pull myself out of that negative spiral a little bit. First up is always keep a good stuff folder on your desktop where anytime you get a nice message from a client or a colleague, you screenshot it and put it into that folder, save it for a rainy day, review it often to remember that you are not the worst freelancer in the world, despite what your brain will tell you, you're actually awesome. And this is just one of those times in the downs and ups of freelancing. Second thing is journal. And I know a lot of people talk about this and I used to doubt a lot whether journaling would actually help me. But when you feel that negative self-talk coming on, like what I do now is I write everything down. So I don't just let it float around endlessly in my brain and kind of bounce around everywhere. I write it all down and then I ask myself an important question, which is, is what I've written down factually true? Sometimes I'll end up writing things down like, what if I never get a client again? What if all of this was for nothing? What if I never make a single dollar from freelancing again? And after I write down everything, it's out of my brain. First of all, I feel immediately like relief that it's not like loose in my brain anymore. And second, I can examine this and be like, is this actually true? Or am I just kind of catastrophizing? catastrophizing, making it a catastrophe. <laughs> the third thing you can do is always come back to the why of why you started freelancing in the first place. So for example, for me, it was to be able to grocery shop in the middle of the day and not have to wake up to an alarm clock. Those are two very, very visual examples that always remind me of why I'm doing this. So during the dark trying times in my freelance career, I always think back to when I used to wake up with this like sense of pure rage at my 8 a.m. alarm clock. And it reminds me that I cannot give up on this journey. So make a note of your why, your very specific, ideally very visual why to light a fire under your butt to keep you plowing through the hard time. You can like write it somewhere where you can review it every single day and I'll just kind of keep you on the bright side. <laughs> All right, the second thing you can do during slow season is update your resume and your application assets. When things are slow in your business, it's time to work on your business, right? So dust off that resume of yours, update it. What projects did you recently complete for your clients that you didn't include or didn't have time to add on yet? Are there any new results from old projects you helped the client complete? Go ahead and add those onto there as well. Did you get any new testimonials from happy clients raving about your kick-ass skills? Add them to your website. Bonus points if you post them to your social media at business accounts as well for everyone to know. Also, if you're missing testimonials from any of your past clients, follow up with them and ask for the testimonials before they forget about the work that they did with you. You can also update your portfolio with your latest client project or even samples you created for your dream client. Making time to update all of your assets now is a really good way to use your time because then you can get going with applying again and you might not have time when you're in the busy season of your freelancing business. All right, idea three is to reach out to past clients and offer a referral percentage for any people that they send your way. This is one of the things that really, really works well if you do it right. So go through your past client roster. You can make a big list and start emailing clients you've worked with in the past. Don't ask them for new work right off the bat. Instead, ask them how they're doing 
doing, how their business is faring. You know, you can compliment them on the blog post they wrote last week, mention how much you loved a specific part of it, check in on the project that you worked on in the past and how it's doing. Are there any updates on it? Are there any new metrics they can share? Nurture the relationship a little bit further, reconnect with them. Ideally, you're always regularly nurturing your past clients, not just when it's slow season. So ideally you're doing this continuously. And if it comes up naturally in the conversation, encourage them by offering a referral percentage of your new rate for any new clients they send your way. You can pay them 20% as a referral gift every time their word of mouth pays off. It's a win-win situation for both of you. I do that all the time. You know, especially if you have a client who's in, for example, a community or a mastermind full of other clients that could be your target person, it's a win-win for them, right? They know you're awesome. They've worked with you. They can vouch for you. And these people might really need your skill sets. So pay them 20% of maybe the first month or of, I don't know, the project fee, whatever percentage makes sense for you. All right, idea for cold pitching. And I know, I know so many freelancers are intimidated by cold pitching for some reason, but cold pitching is a great tactic to try out because of the whole red ocean, blue ocean thing. You know, when you're pitching, you're the only one reaching out to them, blue ocean, right? You're the only fish in the sea. It's not really like an application process where everybody's going for the same position. And when you are cold pitching, if you do it correctly and if you're strategic with it, you can really find people who actually do need someone and be that first person that they talk to who can help them. And they might not even have to go out there and try to get a bunch of people to apply for the job because they already found you and you're awesome right so it can be hard at first to do cold pitching but it gets easier and more fun with practice i actually started to really enjoy cold pitching so my biggest tip here is look for business owners in your niche that you want to work with draft up a nice email or dm explaining who you are and most importantly how you can help them with their business show them that you did your research tell them why you love what they do be specific and slide in something of value for them i love doing that like a helpful tip on how they can address an automation problem with a tool you love or if they're talking about wanting to launch merchandise you can give them a few merch websites that you love you know give them a little bit invest in that relationship you know take your time with it as well don't just show up in somebody's dms and be like hey do you want to work with me here's my portfolio you know really build that relationship a little bit as much as you can give them free value if you notice them struggling with something in their stories or if they send out an email saying that they're really worried about xyz you know answer to those show that you actually are doing your research and you are already part of their audience and always customize your pitch for each client you reach out to never ever ever send out a generic template we are over that that's boring we're not doing that make you sound super sleazy salesy and if you expect to get a response that way well your pitch will only be swallowed by the online void so please make sure that you are doing your due diligence your homework when you are cold pitching and of course you can if it's a dream client, I've done this before and you have the time since you do, create a really good sample just for that client to show off what you can do. And of course you can then use that sample in your portfolio for the future too. So do your research, you know, maybe pick out one or two or three medium size. I would say try not to go for like celebrity clients where it's like, it might be a little bit unattainable. Go for somebody who you think is realistic, who would actually read your email and take, a t they take the time to look at the project and then create a little sample project of something that you know that they're struggling with and be like, hey, check this out. I made this just for you. I would absolutely love the chance to interview with you or chat with you about how I might be able to help you with these kinds of services. Let me know if you'd be interested. Tip five build an emergency fund. So something that really helps me stay calm in times of slow season as a freelancer is having that financial buffer in place. I don't know about you, but everything in my life is more chaotic and stressful when I don't have a little bit of a buffer. So if possible, begin setting aside money as soon as possible, ideally during you know your busy months to make up for the slow season of your freelance journey. Every time you get paid, save a chunk of that money in a separate account because it'll be too tempting to go and spend it all if you don't separate it out. Be sure to plan ahead, have a clear idea of how much you need to set it aside, be it six or 12 months of savings to cover your expenses when you have no work as a freelancer. See what works best for you, your business, your comfort level. Start with a small amount. You can even start with putting aside $100 per month and then gradually increase it to hit your emergency fund goals. That money's not going anywhere, so put it there so that when it is a slow month, you're not thinking, oh my gosh, I'm one month away from like completely going bust. I have that money set aside. Now I can take some time and work on my stuff and really work on setting the best foundation so that I can grow even further. Idea six is to upskill. 
right? Learn new skills to make yourself more valuable. The better your skills, the more money you can make as a freelancer. You are your biggest asset, of course. So if you've been offering the same services to your clients for quite some time now, and you feel that you might've hit your earning ceiling, the slow period is the best opportunity to actually up your game and learn a specialized skill. You'll be able to charge higher rates, get better clients, have more of your like pick of clients. So for example, if you are a virtual assistant with a knack for organizing all the things, you live and breathe to-do lists, you know, classic type A, hands off me, you could easily become your client's virtual higher level sidekick and upskill into a digital business manager like I did. Like loves to organize plans, sprinkle systems powder on all your clients' business. You, your client and your wallet will love that DVM up level. So have a think about how can I upskill? How can I offer more value to my clients? What can I get training in? And of course, if you don't have money to invest, you can Google things, you can watch YouTube videos, you can really like pick up so many skills for free online nowadays, where you can maybe say like, a lot of my clients are looking for help with Dubsado and I'm not really sure how Dubsado works. Now's your time. You can go onto Dubsado's YouTube channel and watch through their videos. If you've been video editing for some time and you want to upskill, you notice a lot of clients are asking for a specific type of editing style or a more modern approach to thumbnails or something. You can do that homework now and get started with it. And what's great is as you're upskilling, as you're practicing, you're creating lots of cool samples for your higher level skill set as well. And you can use those samples to then try to cold pitch or add it into your assets to then pitch clients for future jobs. All right, idea seven, since you have so much time on your hands during a slow season, it may be time to play around with creating a digital product or some other income stream, right? You can brainstorm ideas. I'm sure you have tons of ideas seeing what all of your clients are doing. So you can brainstorm ideas for digital products that might send a little extra cash your way. I personally started creating my online course, Digital Business Manager Bootcamp, while I was working full-time as a freelancer. And yes, it was super exhausting to balance the two because I was working full-time. So if you're currently in a slow season, take advantage of that little bit of downtime and do a little bit of research on what you could offer. I've got an entire video here on YouTube of 15 plus digital products you could create sorted by easy, medium, and difficult. I'll link it in the top right corner for you. I'm never sure which side. But here's an example. If you are a virtual assistant who loves creating beautiful graphics in Canva, you could create a few done for you templates to sell on Etsy and make some extra cash each month. Not only that, those templates might come in handy for future clients, right? So you're essentially creating repeatable, reusable assets for yourself that when you sign future clients that want you to create tons of graphics, you have templates ready to go to save yourself time in the future. So that's awesome as well. Last but definitely not least, even though it may feel like the last thing you want or should be doing, slow season is the perfect time for self-care and treating yourself a little bit. So get out of the house, spend some time outdoors. Chances are you've been cooped up working from home for long enough, which I get. I have gone days without going outside before. So take advantage of that downtime. Get outside. If you love traveling, book a weekend trip, recharge, give yourself that proper break while you can because it will ensure that you're coming back to new clients, to new work, to pitching, to applying to more jobs with the right energy and properly fueled up. You can also spend time with your family or friends. If you've been putting anything off with your family or friends because you've been too busy, go hang out with them. Starting a new business does take up a lot of time. So take advantage of this downtime to really spend that time with them. By talking to some friends and family, they might even mention a connection that needs help with something that you could help well with. So it's kind of like networking, but in a fun way because you're just talking to your friends and family, right? You can also take on a new hobby like reading, crocheting. You could try your hand at cooking some delicious Indian food. I will link a lentil dal recipe below. That's super good. <laughs> You could also volunteer, right? Volunteer your freelance services. It may lead to cool opportunities or someone seeing something you made and inquiring about your services. And it will create samples for your portfolio in the meantime. What's important is that you really take some time to recharge that fuel tank while you can. Enjoy whatever you choose to do for yourself guilt-free because I know you are absolutely doing your best and I promise there are better things ahead. So do not give up during this trying time. I promise the slow season is just part of freelancing sometimes. I know better things are ahead because you're using this downtime very, very productively and making sure that you are essentially creating strategy for how your business is gonna move forward, the foundation, right? You can work on tons of things like branding, ensuring your targeting is right, your messaging is right, understanding your clients more. You can beta test new services. You can do all of those things during a down season to really set yourself up for success. 
So which idea do you like the most? And if you come up with other things you like to do during a down season, drop them in the sharing comment circle below so we can all benefit. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.